Welcome to Algebra 1. The learning goal for this episode is to learn the vocabulary associated with radicals and how to simplify expressions involving radicals. First, some necessary vocabulary. A radical expression is an expression that contains a radical, such as a square root, cube root, or other root. For example, the square root of 73, or the cube root of 14, or the fifth root of the quantity x plus 7, are all radical expressions. The number or expression inside the radical symbol is called the radicand. For example, the fifth root of the quantity x plus 7, the quantity x plus 7 is the radicand. If a radical does not have an indicated root, it is assumed to be a square root. A square root is a number that when multiplied by itself gives you the radicand. For example, the square root of 49 is 7 or negative 7. A cube root is a number that when multiplied by itself twice, so a total of three of them, gives you the radicand. For example, the cube root of 64 is 4, because 4 times 4 times 4 is 64. Higher roots work the same way. The fourth root of 16 is 2, or negative 2, because both 2 and negative 2, when raised to the fourth power, equal 16. A radical expression is considered to be in simplest form if the following conditions are true. First, it has no perfect square factors other than 1 in the radicand. Second, it can have no fractions at all in the radicand. And third, no radicals can appear in the denominator of a fraction. We can use the product and quotient properties of radicals to help us simplify radical expressions. The product property of radicals simply states that the square root of a product equals the products of the square roots of the factors. Or in other words, the square root of the quantity a times b is equal to the square root of a times the square root of b. The quotient property is very similar, stating that the square root of a quotient equals the quotient of the square roots of the num numerator and the denominator. Or, stated another way, the square root of the quantity a divided by b is equal to the square root of a divided by the square root of b. So in this example, let's simplify the square root of 18. First, we choose to break down 18 into the product of 9 and 2. We chose 9 and 2 because 9 is a perfect square. So now we can take the square root of 9 and get 3. That just leaves us with a radicand of 2. So t 3 times the square root of 2 is considered simplified form. We sometimes just say 3 root 2. This is considered simplified form because 2 does not contain any perfect square factors, have a fraction in it, or a radical in the denominator. Let's look at this example. Again, we want to look for ways to split 32x to the fifth up into factors that include perfect square factors. So we choose to split 32 into 16 times 2, and x to the fifth into x to the fourth times x. We do that because then we can take the square root of 16 and get 4, and we can take the square root of x to the fourth and get x squared, which gives us a simplified form of 4x squared times the square root of the quantity 2x. This is considered simplified because 2x does not contain any perfect square factors, does not have a fraction in it, and does not have a radical in the denominator. This example includes a quotient. So we split it into the square root of the numerator divided by the square root of the denominator which leaves us with the square root of 17 divided by 9. This is simplified form since 17 does not have any perfect square factors, does not have a fraction in it, and does not have a radical in the denominator. Here's another quotient example. We split it apart in numerator and denominator. Then we take the square root of the denominator. Since the numerator can't be simplified, this is simplified form. This example is a little different. It has a radical in the denominator, so we know it's not simplified, yet we can't really do much with the square root of 11. So we go through a process known as rationalizing the denominator. We choose to multiply our fraction by the square root of 11 over the square root of 11. We can do that because that's the same thing as 1, and multiplying by 1 doesn't change the value of our expression. When we do that, we get 6 root 11 in the numerator, we simply get 11 in the denominator, since the square root of 11 times the square root of 11 gives us 11, by definition. This is now simplified form. Whenever you see a radical in the denominator like this, rationalize the denominator by going through a similar process. Let's try this again. Again, we have a denominator we can't do much with. 
So we multiply by the square root of 5x over the square root of 5x, which again is just another name for 1. This gives us 2 times the square root of 35x in the numerator and just 5x in the denominator. This is in simplified form. Now let's look at this sum and difference problem. First, we group together like terms. In this case, like terms are going to be those terms that have the same radical factor. We can then combine those like terms just like if those radicals were variables. So 3 root 17 minus 2 root 17 gives us 1 root 17. And 6 root 19 plus 5 root 19 gives us 11 root 19. Note we cannot combine root 17 and 11 root 19 because they are not like terms because their radical parts are different. This is as simple as we can get it. Now let's try a distributive property problem. We distribute just like normal. So when we distribute we get root 6 times 7 root 3 and then root 6 times 6. We use our product property to allow us to combine root 6 times root 3 to get root 18. So we get 7 root 18 plus 6 root 6. But now we should notice that we can simplify root 18 a little bit by breaking it down into root 9 times root 2. Since the square root of 9 is 3, we can break that out. So we end up with 21 root 2 plus 6 root 6. This is as simplified as we can get it. Now for our guided practice section, we're going to work through some problems together. You do not need to write down these problems, just step through them with me. At each step I'm going to prompt you the question you should be asking yourself, then I'll pause for about 5 seconds for you to think about it and answer it for yourself, then I'll show you. Our first question is, what are we trying to do here? What we're trying to do is simplify this radical expression. How do we do that? First, we use our quotient property and our product property to split this into radicands we know how to simplify. Now what? Now we simplify those radicands that we can simplify. So the square root of 25 becomes 5, the square root of x squared becomes x, the square root of 64 becomes 8, and the square root of y to the fourth becomes y squared. What's next? There's not much else we can do. We typically write all the numbers outside of the radical in the front, so we rewrite this as 5x root 5 divided by 8y squared. We're done. Let's try another one. What do we do first? We need to rationalize the denominator, so we choose to multiply by root 3 over root 3. Now what? Now we multiply both the numerator and the denominator to get 3 root 3 over root 9. What's next? Since 9 is a perfect square, we can take the square root of it and get 3. Are we finished? No, there's one more step. We can divide 3 by 3 and get 1, so we're left with root 3. Now we're done. Let's try one more. What do we do first? First we try to simplify each term, so we rationalize, rationalize the denominator for each term. What's next? Now we simplify. Now what? We notice that we can simplify root 12. What's next? In order to add fractions, we need a common denominator, so we choose to multiply our first term by 4 over 4, just another name for 1, in order to get twelfths. What's next? We now rewrite that first term as 16 root 3 over 12. What's our next step? Now we add fractions just like normal. We add the numerators, so we get 30 root 3, and our denominator stays the same at 12. Now what? Now our last step is to reduce 30 twelfths to 5 halves, since 6 goes into both 30 and 12, leaving us with 5 root 3 over 2. We're finished. Now for the self-check section. In this section you're going to physically pause the video as you work out the problem on paper in your notebook. Then you'll press play to check to see how you did. You'll have five seconds to pause the video after I stop speaking before I show you the solution. Please pause the video and work out the problem, then press play to check. 
Here is the solution. Please compare this to your work. Pause the video here if you need more time to compare, then press play again to move to the next problem. Same thing on this problem. Pause the video, write down this problem and work it out in your notebook, then press play to check. Please pause the video now. Here's the solution. Again, pause the video if you need more time to compare this to your work. Let's do one more. Pause the video, write down this problem and work it out in your notebook, then press play to check. Please pause the video now. Here's the solution. Again, pause the video if you need more time to compare this to your work. In closing, let's review our learning goal. We wanted to learn the vocabulary associated with radicals and how to simplify expressions involving radicals. We did this by learning how to simplify radicals by finding perfect squares and taking the square root, by combining like terms when we add and subtract, and by rationalizing the denominator when we had a radical in the denominator.